Well, this is a bad idea. Well guys, welcome back to the channel. As you guys can see, the Honda has made it back to my shop over the past two, two and a half-ish months. The boys over at Straight Fabrication have been going through and doing all of the fab work needed on this car. They built us the turbo kit, our parachute is matched, so we're gonna go ahead and cover all of that in today's video. But as you guys saw by the intro, we're putting nitrous on this thing. Now, if you guys have been following along this entire build journey, when it was a running car to when I totaled it, took it down to a bare chassis and left with what we do have now, I had a goal of wanting to complete this car in 30 days. We are now seven, eight months in on this build and things have just gotten blown out of proportion. But I will say, I'm very happy with what we've done. Now, the entire goal with this Honda is to have the maximum amount of fun as possible on the drag strip, on the street, in the mountains, wherever I decide to drive this car, car shows, whatever it is. As you guys know, I have my 7 STI that makes 1100 wheel. But unfortunately, I kind of just lost the spark with that car and we are kind of fulfilling everything missing with that car on my Honda. Now, in case you guys are new here or you guys have forgotten, the last time you guys saw this car, it had a bare long block and a trans in this car. We did end up building both of these. We have a PPG gear set dog box for our trans and then our motor is a sleeved Rammy block. We have built head all used by Brian Crower. So the motor and trans are pretty beefed up. And the whole plan was to turbo this car. Now, since I've went through such extreme lengths on building my perfect car, I didn't want to go ahead and just order some off the shelf turbo kit. And I don't have any fabrication expertise whatsoever. So we had our boys make me the turbo kit I had perfectly envisioned. Now to go over some of the specs with this turbo kit, we have a perfectly equal length exhaust manifold and they did a crazy design because I wanted this thing just to pop in your face. Going up to a billet collector, really nice peach, and then kind of goes to an up pipe section if you guys are familiar with like a Subaru that uses an up pipe, that goes to our turbo. The reason we had this built is if I ever want to change turbos in the future, all I have to rebuild and modify is this part and maybe the downpipe instead of going through and redesigning the exhaust manifold. So that's a really nice touch that they did. And then out of the turbo, we have a four inch exhaust. We just went ahead and matched all of the intercooler, the exhaust piping to the exact size of the turbo. So there's no restrictions. It doesn't go to a bigger size. It should flow perfectly. And then going to a 60 mil wastegate. Now the turbo I am using is a Pulsar. I've never used this. I'm very much a precision fanboy, but a lot of Honda people were recommending this turbo. So we did decide to try it. This is a 6775. Should make a thousand wheel, no problem. And then we have all of our charge prepping made as well. And for ease of working on this car, we did go ahead and throw some Motion Waste Works clamps on here so we don't have any couplers, don't have to worry about uh, any boost leaks. Hopefully, these should seal pretty good. I'm just not the biggest fan of couplers, and plus, these look a lot better. Now, moving our way onto the interior, not a whole lot was done. It's really just my seating position, as originally, I had some very comfortable Buddy Club P1 seats. Unfortunately, we were not able to make that fit. So we went ahead and went with the traditional drag seat, which is a Kirky full aluminum. This thing is extremely lightweight. They made some insanely gorgeous custom seat brackets to get me to sit exactly where I need in this car. As originally, I had a very hard time. I am very short legged. So now with the seat position, this thing hugs me like crazy and I sit exactly where I'm comfortable driving this car. I'm not overextended, not underextended. So right now how I sit is perfect to where I wanna be able to drive this car. But as you guys can see up here, they also got my parachute, if I can find it, mounted up here. We do have a CO2 one. So originally the plan is to use this button to throw my parachute. But in case the CO2 cartridge is not full, we do have our emergency handle that we can still go ahead and throw up when we're going really fast. And then now for one of my favorite parts is our wheel drive is hooked up. We have our drive shaft in this thing. We do need to go ahead and still pop in our axles. I'm waiting on my front axles. I've been back ordered for some time now, but today we're gonna go ahead and toss in the rear axles as my poor wheel bearings have had no stubs in there. So I'm crossing my fingers that these wheel bearings aren't shot. Now this is a view and a half. Damn. Also, uh, sorry, K-Tune, a uh, very awesome company. They sent a ton of parts for this car where you do have to go through re-sticker this as we had to add a ton of brackets to our traction bar. One for obviously our intercooler, our mid plate, so we have to go through. We have to make a ton of things look nice still, again, because a lot of stuff, unfortunately, had to get damaged to make work. 
But here we go. Our drive shaft is now installed in the car. The thing that we had to wait for to get this done was I had a uh, straight fabrication build me plates on my frame rail to bolt my biscuits to. A lot of people um, can just rib nut them into that. I don't really trust that. So I wanted to have plates made. It's gonna disperse all of that weight across that section rather than just tiny little rib nuts. So they welded, welded us plates for that. Our viscous, all that is sturdy in here now and it looks fantastic. And for the meantime, we do have to go through at some point before we actually go drive this car is we have to go through, pull off the drive shaft, repaint this as the front section is from the 1989 wagon. This is the factory drive shaft they cut down, welded, made fit for us. Our viscous, we have to go through, rebuild it, recode it as it's little just corroded, looks good. Put a different weight fluid in here. I think we're gonna try a, a 40 weight, a 60 weight. Crap, big difference, can't remember which fluid I ordered. Our rear section is from S1, so this rear section is good to go. And then obviously we have the wagon diff. Now they always say build a car and then go through, paint it, make it look good. I did the exact opposite. The first thing I did on this car was do the undercoating, repaint the car, and that left us with a ton of areas that we have to go ahead and touch up now. For example, when we added the cage, it kind of burnt through. So I had to go ahead and strip all of the four points, I believe it is. Recoat that. Our trans tunnel, we have to go through. Recoat some of that stuff as well. Ton of small things that we need to touch up. But you live and learn. This is my first time ever doing a chassis up rebuild. The next time we do one, it will be a lot better. And I'll take a lot of notes I've taken from this. But we're making some good progress. Now, this is my first time ever... Installing nitrous. I've never had nitrous in any car. I've never experienced nitrous in the car. I just know from the Fast and Furious movies that this stuff is pretty cool and I want to go ahead and throw on my Honda. But they went ahead and sent over everything needed to get this thing hooked up down to some very cool billet brackets. I'll show you guys how these work later when we get these balls or these bottles placed into the car. But we have all of the lines, we have our relays, our wiring. We have everything here. Now, laid out in front of us, we have all of our relays, our switches to actually give this thing power. We have our switch panel um, for our arming, purging, and our bottle heater. All of that stuff, our gauges. And then we have two big show purge kits because we're gonna have some insane purging coming out of here. I'm thinking I'm probably gonna have them come out from here. I'm gonna have four jets come out. So there, there, maybe somewhere out in the front. I just want this thing to be obnoxious. But I don't know, it's gonna be trial and error and just seeing what works because this video is kind of following up and leading up to us wiring this car. Laid out in this bin here, I have, I think it was like 2,200 feet of wire. I'm using the Nexus R5 ECU. So we have to go through with the Haltech flying lead harness and actually build out this harness ourselves. I have a good friend, Brian, who's gonna be coming over and assisting with this as I've never wired a car before. So we're kind of getting everything set up in this video for the next video to wire this car and hopefully the next Honda video, we can get power to our cluster, our engine and stuff like that. But I am told to expect about a hundred hours to get this harness built. So if there's not another video following this one, I do apologize. We are gonna be working behind the scenes, getting this thing wired, but I'm not gonna make a hundred videos wiring this car. That's just extremely boring and tedious. I will make a full in-depth video on it, but these things take time, guys. And here we go. We got both of the bottle brackets made. The bottles sit amazing here. These brackets are super user-friendly. It'll be really nice taking this bottle out and in. We have to go ahead and fill this thing up. But here is the built-in bottle heaters as well. Super flush, you kinda have to know what you're looking for, you can't even tell. But we're gonna go ahead and get this thing wired later down the road in the next episode when we actually wire this chassis. But let's go ahead and get this thing bolted in. And now we get to the part on why I needed two bottles of nitrous for this car when really one would do the trick. And that is because we're putting it on the roll cage. Now for me working on cars, everything has to be symmetrical or it drives me crazy. So if we were to go through and just put one bottle on one of the roll bars, it would drive me crazy. So the whole reason we have two kits is so we can put one on each roll bar, plus it'll just look insane. Now here's another example. When I got my cage installed, I had to have a sill bar on the driver door, just as the 8.5 certification requires. It's not needed on the passenger side, but since it didn't have one, it wasn't symmetrical. It drove me crazy. So we went ahead and added one. Roughly mounted. 
the down bars are kind of angled, so it's gonna look funny, but I think with both bottles in here, ah, let's get the other bracket on. <laughs> this is going to look insane. Anyone driving behind me, I apologize. It is going to look menacing with my parachute and then through the window, all you see is just two nitrous bottles. This is crazy. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Dude, that is crazy. I need to angle that one a little bit more. Dude. And then for the wiring and plumbing of this, it'll be very easy. I'm gonna run like all the power wires up along the down bars. Same with all of the nitrous lines, kind of tuck it as much as possible. But especially when I put my headliner in, I don't wanna be able to see any wires or any lines. And then obviously we'll have our purge line somewhere up in our engine bay. I haven't quite decided where I wanna put it yet, but we're gonna have some insane purging with this thing too. I ordered two of the big show purge kits, so it's, we're gonna go through like two bottles a week of just purging this thing. But there we go, boys. This car is officially getting nitrous. Huge shout out to Nitrous Outlet for making all of my dumb ideas possible here. Um, but in the next video, we're gonna start wiring this chassis and try to get power to this thing because after that, all we have left is to plumb the fuel system. I'm working with an amazing company, Aftermarket Industries. They are sending the last remaining stuff to get the fuel system done and then my goal is within the month to get the first startup on this thing. And for anyone curious on the ECU setup I'm running on this car, and you guys haven't seen previous videos, I am running, if I can get this thing open, the Haltech Nexus Series R5. Which is Haltech's top of the line ECU. It's not even an ECU, it's actually a VCU. But in the next video, I'll go ahead and explain the whole VCU I'm using, the ECU, the reason I'm using it, and then also me learning how to wire a chassis and hopefully we get this thing done right first because if not it's very expensive if we mess things up break things and whatnot but i have a good friend brian who's going to be assisting us he is a pretty good wiring guru so we're making some progress slowly but surely but i'll see you boys in the next one